Hey everyone, Pseudo here. This is going to be my quick start guide for Guild Wars 2. I've been playing this game for 9 years, pretty much done everything in it, and if I had to start over, this is how I'd do it. Keep in mind, this guide does invalidate some of the new player experience, so if you are looking to have that, probably bookmark this, and then give it a whirl yourself. See what you like, and then come back to it. Anyway, let's get going. So first, you land on the home splash screen. You'll have some open character slots. We've got one here. Let's go make a character. Choose your race. There are five to choose from in Guild Wars 2. These do not really affect your stats. They only affect your racial skills. Um, I prefer Norns because they have some overpowered stuff for world versus world. Then you go into choosing your base class or profession as they're called in Guild Wars 2. You have a bunch of different ones to choose from. Three heavy armor classes, three medium armor classes, and three light armor classes. Don't worry too much because they've really normalized what each one can do in PvE. Pick the one that you think would be best for you, maybe look up some guides on how each one plays. But for now, we're going to choose Guardian because they're pretty versatile. You can choose your character's attributes. These are more customizable once you unlock makeover kits in the game. First step of your backstory, this will affect how your story plays out. You get to choose the second aspect of your personal story effectively choosing what mission you'll do in the second part of your personal story in the game. And you'll get an opening cinematic, gives you a brief introduction to the world of Tyria, what's been going on. We're gonna skip to the end of this. Some cutscenes in Guild Wars 2 are skippable, some are not. All right, and then it dumps you into the tutorial mission. It says we have to finish the tutorial. You'll notice the objective that you have selected to complete, by default the tutorial one, will appear in the top right of your screen by a little green dots. These generally give you an idea of where to go and what to do for this task. It should be noted that if you are choosing a race to pick in Guild Wars 2. A lot of people prefer humans with the commoner backstory because it's easy to complete for weekly Black Lion keys. You will get a Black Lion key, which are kind of like the gateway to loot drops in this game, for completing your level 10 story once per week. A lot of people prefer the story for doing weekly key runs or key farming. All right, we finished the tutorial. You'll notice we got some gear here. We won't really need this because while we could equip the mace, we're just gonna jump right to moderate endgame. So, double click our level 80 boost. This will not actually consume it, this just lets you try out the class you're playing in an endgame zone at the max level of 80. This will give you your base traits unlocked, as well as a default build, and some exotic level 80 celestial gear, which you should keep for later. Celestial sets aren't the best for endgame PvE content, but they are extremely useful for world versus world builds. So once we're in Silver Waste, which is the endgame content area for now, you're free to run around, attack stuff, complete quests, and, in general, play the video game. Try out different classes before you commit to one, so that you know what they sort of play like and feel like. You can always revert these changes just by logging out to your character select screen without consuming the boost if you don't like them or want to try a different class. Once you've decided on a class that's for you, it's time to get into the game. So we'll consume our level 80 boost and effectively choose Guardian as our level 80 class to boost. This will also give us some nice goodies to start off the game with. Get four 15 slot bags, which we should equip, boosting our inventory size. A random die pack, you can see what dies each of these contain on the wiki. Celebration booster, we'll save that for later, as well as some harvesting tools that we can equip. Let's hit our sort and compact buttons and close that inventory for now. Once your character's at level 80, you're free to explore the game. Assuming you've bought one of the expansions, you should probably start into either the first mission of End of Dragons via opening your story journal and beginning the story, or open your story journal and start the first chapter of Heart of Thorns. You don't really need to know what's going on in the story to play through these chapters, although there will be a few spoilers. Completing the first chapter of Heart of Thorns will unlock one of the movement masteries, the ability to glide. You also unlock this by default in the End of Dragons story. Any account that's purchased any of the three expansions will unlock the Raptor Mount at level 10, or any multiple of level 10, afterward. So if you have a level 24 character, you'll unlock it at level 30. This mount is extremely useful for getting around the world of Tyria, as it can jump short distances, and also much longer distances once you level it up. One other thing to note. By leveling your character up to level 80, you unlock two waypoints by default, Traitor's Forum Waypoint and Lion's Arch, which is one of the main hub cities, will give you access to all the things that you could ever need, such as banks and shops, as well as the player-to-player -player trading post. It should be noted, there's another hub city you unlock by default, just for being level 80. It's a bit out of the way, and a bit of an endgame zone, but it's in the Hall of Monuments. You unlock this waypoint, Eye of the North. Let's go there. This area is essentially another hub city, that you can level up yourself. There's loads to do in this game, and there's also loads to buy from the gem store. I would ignore most of this for now. Most of the items in the gem store, or the cash shop as it's known, are cosmetic, but there are two things that I would definitely pick up, one of which is almost impossible to play the game without, the copper-fed salvage o -matic. Loot in this game is granted to you in the form of unidentified gear 
as well as specific drops. Most of the unidentified gear needs to be salvaged into materials, and the copper-fed salvage matic is definitely something that I would grab and put into one of your shared inventory slots. Another useful item is the Mistlock Sanctuary Pass, or the Thousand Seas Pavilion Pass, or the Armistice Bastion Pass. The Mistlock Sanctuary Pass is the fractal version, while the Thousand Seas Pass is the one for End of Dragons, and the Armistice Bastion Pass is the one for World vs. World. These essentially give you access to hub cities, where you can teleport to and from by double-clicking the pass, and then double-clicking the pass to return to where you were. And that's it! Guild Wars 2 is definitely the most fluid MMO out there. It's fun, it doesn't hate you, it doesn't try to steal your money, and lets you play at your own pace. It has horizontal progression where most of the endgame is all cosmetic, and you can set your own goals for yourself. What do you do from here? You go on adventures! Feel free to play through the lower story now that you have a level 80 character that's fully geared, or try some of the more advanced expansion stories. They'll get you going in the right directions and help you unlock a lot of the masteries you'll need for in-game content. There's lots of different game modes to try in Guild Wars 2. These are all accessible by the menu at the top left. You can jump into PvP, where gear is normalized, you have access to most of the amulets and gear by default, or you could jump into World vs. World, where you carry over your stats and gear from PvE. Feel free to customize your character, use some of the dies you unlock, or just sell everything you get from leveling up on the trading post. Whatever you choose, remember to have fun. Guild Wars 2 has loads of different content and game for PvP, World vs. World, and PvE. I have quick start guides coming on the channel for each of these game modes, but if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm Pseudo, I stream weeknights on Twitch and YouTube, and I'm always happy to answer any questions that new players might have. I've played this game for 9 years, pretty much done everything, and I'm always happy to help. So just drop me a comment if you have any questions. No question is too stupid. I promise. We've all been there. Happy adventuring!